Hi again. So, um, this I promise is really the last lecture on that Flaps article. Um, and I got cut off uh, where I was saying that New Zealand and Australia, they objected to Fiji's ban on the sale of lap, uh, lamb flaps. And then they took their complaint to the World Trade Organization, which I think we've discussed before is a big organization that advocates for free trade globally. Somehow or another, the Fijians, they won their case. Um, but of course, it didn't really make much difference because people in Fiji didn't like lamb flaps anyway. And the truth is that there are a lot of other very high fat foods almost all of them imports that are already in Fiji and uh, possibly causing the same kinds of diet-related chronic degenerative diseases that we've talked about kind of throughout the class. Okay, that's that for Fiji. Now let's talk about Tonga. That's the third place, the third island nation state. It's in Polynesia. And the Tongans, they loved lamb flaps, and they fit in perfectly into a very traditional food uh, that they had used for a very, very long time. So that food I'm talking about, and it's mentioned in the article, is called Povi Bolu Masima. Oh, let's just, you and me, we'll call it salt beef, okay? Salt beef was something that was brought into Tonga by uh, Western sailors and whalers and merchant ships and so forth because salt beef, which is just beef that was preserved in salt water in big oak-like barrels, was what people used to use to feed the crews of sailing ships. When these sailing ships came into Tonga, as pretty much throughout Polynesia, uh, the sailors were trading with indigenous people for, among other, for, for fruit mostly, because the sailors were starved for fruit and vegetables. And um, that's how the Tongans uh, came to know salt beef, which it turns out that they really liked, and they like it until today. It's rather fat. It's not that good for you if you eat a lot of it, as many of these products we know are not good for you. At any rate, uh, they were used in all kinds of traditional Tongan rituals, also in new rituals that the Tongans had taken up in connection with Christianization and new schools that were established by the British and the flaps just fit in beautifully wherever the, the salt beef was, uh, was used. Salt beef was getting rather expensive. Uh, flaps uh, fit in there perfectly. And unfortunately, uh, to the detriment of the Tongans, who already were suffering very, very high rates of METS, you know, metabolic syndrome disorder, as we discussed all the way back uh, with the uh, Native Americans. Um, and Tongans recognize this, uh, and um, they have had sort of national programs. They are a parliamentary monarchy uh, now, and their king, uh, who is really a symbolic figure, but he's tried to lead people into different diet uh, patterns. Uh, unfortunately, though, Again, there are these very high rates of METs, and that includes, as we know, ultimately things like diabetes type 2 and kidney failure and so forth and so on, uh, for which, by a kind of an interesting, ironic trick of colonialism, the New Zealanders are responsible. The New Zealanders have these old treaties where they have to provide medical treatment for a number of Polynesian islanders, including Tongans, um, which means that some Tongans end up in New Zealand getting kidney transplants, treatment for diabetes, and so forth, which are very expensive for the New Zealand government, which now 
amusingly, I suppose, has come around to the idea that maybe they shouldn't have been shipping very fat products like lamb flaps to places like Tonga in the first place. At any rate, uh, the main point I wanted to make here was about the substitution. The uh, salt beef was already there, the lamb flaps fit absolutely perfectly, and the Tongans were just excellent targets for that kind of marketing. Okay, so that's it for my, uh, my brief film career here, all right? Um, I'll uh, see you later. Bye-bye.